Hey guys, in this video, we're gonna take a look at how to install Open Media Vault on a Raspberry Pi. Now, I've actually been working on uh, kind of putting this idea together for the last couple of weeks, and even went so far as to download all of the files I would need and put them on, the, on my desktop, so I would just have a constant reminder of, hey, go make this video. Well, yesterday, when I started recording this video, I found out that when they switched from version four to version five, they changed the whole method. So I guess, thankfully, I hadn't made this video just yet. So uh, let's jump over uh, to my desktop, where we're gonna take a look at how to install Open Media Vault 5 on a Raspberry Pi. Okay, actually, before we go ahead and do that, let's talk about the things that you're gonna need for this project. Uh, obviously, you're gonna need a Raspberry Pi, whether it's a three or four is completely up to you. I will be using a uh, Raspberry Pi 4 Max. Uh, that's the one with four gigs of RAM in it. Uh, and I wanna thank Canakit for sending that over uh, for some videos that I've done so far. Uh, they, they are actually the ones that made this video possible, so thanks to Canakit. Uh, you're also gonna need uh, a micro SD card, as well as a micro SD card, a USB adapter so that you can plug that into your computer. Uh, you'll also probably want an ethernet cable so you can plug the Raspberry Pi into uh, a wired connection just for ease of uh, use here. Also, you'll probably want some sort of external hard drive. In this case, I'm going to be using an M.2 drive uh, that I converted to an external storage device. But if you've got just an old uh, mechanical drive with a USB adapter, uh, that would work just as well also. So uh, Raspberry Pi, micro USB, uh, ethernet cable, external hard drive. That should be everything you're gonna need. Uh, no mouse or keyboard or anything like that for this because we're gonna do everything on our Windows computer to make this work. So to get things started, you're gonna to need to download Raspbian Lite and Etcher. Once you've got both of those downloaded, you'll plug your micro SD card into your computer and open Etcher. In Etcher, you'll select your Raspbian Lite image file, and then you'll select your micro SD card, and then click Flash. Once Etcher has written the file and verified everything, unplug the micro SD card reader and then plug it back in. Um, then open your file explorer and look for the drive labeled boot. Open that drive and right click inside the window and click create new text file. Name the file SSH and make sure to remove the .txt from the file name. So now go ahead and unplug the micro SD card reader from your computer and remove the micro SD card from it. Then plug the micro SD card into your Raspberry Pi. Okay, so at this point, you'll wanna give the Raspberry Pi a few minutes to reboot and get settled in. And while you're doing that, uh, go over to your router and grab the IP address of your uh, Raspberry Pi slash Open Media Vault server here. You're gonna need that later on in the video. Okay, so once you've got the IP address and you've given the Raspberry Pi a couple of minutes to reboot and get settled in, now it's time to open up an application like Putty and put the IP address that you got from your router into the host name and make sure to leave the port at 22 and then go ahead and log in. A terminal window will pop up asking you to log in. The username is Pi and the password is Raspberry. Anytime you're typing in a password, you won't see any asterisks or anything. Just type your password and press enter. Next, you'll wanna change the Raspberry password to something more secure. To do that, type P-A-S-S-W-D into the terminal window and press enter. It'll ask you to type in the current password, so type in Raspberry, then it will ask you to enter your new password, and then once more it'll ask you to re-enter that new password. So now it's time to make sure that Raspbian is fully updated. In the terminal window, type sudo apt-get update, let the system do its thing, and when you've got back to a blinking cursor, type sudo apt-get upgrade. Now this may take several minutes, so let it run until you get a blinking cursor, and then type sudo reboot. This will reboot your Raspberry Pi and close your PuTTY connection. Wait a couple of minutes and then open PuTTY and log in like you did with your new password. Next, you'll add pi to the user group SSH with the command sudo add user pi SSH. Once that's complete, you're gonna download and execute a file from GitHub that will install and configure the Open Media Vault server software. Uh, that script will be in the blog post. 
Now this process may take a little while depending on your internet connection and what version of Raspberry Pi you've got. It took me about 15 minutes to complete this, but understand that it could take upwards of 30 minutes. Once the script has run and completed, reboot the Raspberry Pi with sudo reboot. And at this point, you can plug in your external hard drive. Then open a web browser and in the address bar, type in the IP address of the Raspberry Pi and press enter. This should bring up an open Media Vault login screen. The username is admin and the default password is Open Media Vault. There are a couple of things you'll want to do as soon as you're signed in for the first time. The first thing, you'll want to change the auto logout setting by clicking General Settings and under System in the left column. Then change the setting from five minutes to something more like 30 or 60 minutes and then click Save. Then you'll see a yellow bar across the top of the page that asks you to apply or revert. Click apply and it may take a couple of minutes for the update to save. Next, you'll want to change the web administrator password under system, general settings, web administrator password. Enter the new password into each field and click save, then apply in the yellow bar that appears at the top of the page. Now that you've got the login stuff taken care of, it's time to add your storage. In the left column, look for storage. Disks should be the first option under that. Click disks and then select your USB hard drive from the list in the right side of the page. Then click the white button and confirm that you want to wipe the disk. When the process is complete, click the done button. Next, click file systems in the left column. In the main area of the page, click create. In the device dropdown, select the USB hard drive. Give the device a label. I called mine files. Then click OK. The page will then ask if you want to format the device. Click yes, and the format process may take a minute or two, depending on the size of your hard drive and whether or not you're on USB 2 or USB 3. Once the process is complete, click close. Select the newly formatted USB drive and then click the mount button, then click apply in the yellow bar at the top of the page. Saving and applying may take a minute or two, so be patient. In the left column under Access Rights Management, click Shared Folders. Click Add and then give the shared folder a name and select the shared file system you've just created in the previous step. The path will autofill with the name you gave the shared folder. Set the permissions to Everyone Read Write and click Save and then click Apply at the yellow bar at the top of the page. Next, under Services, select the appropriate type of share for your network type. Because I've got an all Windows network, I'll select SMB CFIS. Once you've selected that, make sure that under General Settings, the Enable option is green. If not, make it green, click Save, and then click Apply in the yellow bar across the top of the page. Click the Shares tab under the blue bar at the top of the page and click Add. Make sure the share is enabled and then click the drop down arrow and select the shared folder you created earlier. Where it says public, change the setting from no to only guests and then click save. Then click apply in the yellow bar at the top of the page. And remember that saving and applying may take a minute or two, so be patient. So at this point, you've done everything you need to do in order to set up a shared folder that has fully open access to anybody on your network. To test this, we'll go back to our Windows machine and open the file manager. In the address bar of the file manager, type backslash backslash, and then the IP address of your Raspberry Pi, then press enter. You should then see the shared folder that you just created. Open that folder and then start dragging files into it from your documents or your desktop or wherever, just to make sure everything is working as expected. Okay guys, there's how to install Open Media Vault on a Raspberry Pi. Now I will say that version four was easier to install than version five was, but version five wasn't too bad, all things considered. So uh, hopefully you found this video helpful. If you did, do me a favor, give the video a thumbs up. That would be really, really helpful to me. If you know anybody that's looking to install Open Media Vault on a Raspberry Pi, uh, send them to this video, that would be awesome. Uh, and I think that pretty much sums up everything I wanted to say in this video. I just 
wanted to get Open Media Vault installed to show you how to do that. So I think I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up. So as always, thanks for your time. I always appreciate your support and I'll talk to you in the next video.